Welcome to Lead Off Man, brought to you by Heinz Lumber. Your money goes further when you go to Heinz. Steve Stone down on the field with the intimidating force from the San Diego Padres, Rich Gossage. You're my roommate when you were with the White Sox in 1973. And is there any truth to the rumor that I taught you everything you know? You did. You taught me everything I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and Rich, let me ask you one question. I, I know it's on the, the minds of a lot of fans. You're with the Yankees, but you came to them as a free agent. Something brought you to the Yankees. Now you came to San Diego as a free agent, and you said you're kind of happy to be out of there. What's the difference about being over here as opposed to being in New York? Well, I think that New York is, there's only one New York, you know. They call it a zoo, and probably that's exactly what it is, is a zoo. But, you know, it takes a certain type of uh, uh, person or ter ter per uh, you know, a certain type of person to play in New York. Uh, you know, you got to be aggressive, and I'm aggressive, and um, I think that New York brought the best out of me in times. You know, they're very demanding, and I put a lot of demand on myself, as you know, Steve. Let me ask you one question about intimidation, because that's, you've been your stock and trade for this many years, but you have a unique capability. You're an intimidating pitcher with good control. How do you work on intimidation? Well, Steve, you know, everything, every time that I've gone out there, I don't do anything uh, premeditated. It's, it's just a natural thing that, that comes over me when I, when I get into a situation. Uh, I feel that uh, Dick Allen used to tell me situation dictates itself and, and how pumped up you are. People say uh, in some games I've got through a four-run lead, and they say, you know, guys on other teams say, well, you know, you didn't have it today. Well, I, why go out there and throw your 98-mile-an-hour fastball if you don't need it? I think the situation, like Dick used to say, dictates itself, and, and the situation does help me to get pumped up. What kind of an effect did the older players you played with earlier in your career have on you? Well, I think that every time that I've, I've had the pleasure of playing with a Jim Cott or a, uh, Wilbur Wood or Eddie Fisher or Phil Reagan or when, it, when I was over here with the White Sox, I felt I, I watched those guys and I watched uh, Dick Allen taught me an awful lot about the game, just the basics of it, um, what you do in situations. And I think that, uh, uh, that every time that I've had the opportunity of catfish hunter, per se, uh, I've always learned something from each individual. I've watched them and studied them and, and what makes them so great. And, and I think it's their, their physical makeup, first of all, or their, their personalities. And I think that that's where you learn a lot, uh, not only from the physical aspect of pitching, but from the, from the mental part of it. Well, you talked a little bit about some of the great pitchers you'd played with, and they were all starters. And you were a starter also. You started your whole life. All of a sudden, you came up with the Chicago White Sox as a rookie, and they put you in the bullpen. What was the adjustment for you? Well, it was a big adjustment. Like you say, I'd, I'd been a starter all my career and, uh, in the minor leagues, and then I was brought up. I felt like back then, relief pitching hadn't come really into its own yet. And uh, I just, I felt like I'd been demoted, you know. I, I felt like, you know, hell, that's where old pitchers go, you know. And it's like a junkyard. And I, I didn't feel like I should be there. I felt I should be starting. But Chuck Tanner, he saw, must have seen, saw something in me that, uh, that really, um, uh, in, you know, influenced him to put me down there. And I, I think it's perfect because I, I didn't, once I went back to starting here when I was with the White Sox uh, in 76, uh, I went back to starting and I didn't like the five days off in between. I'd get my rear end kicked maybe and, you know, I'm out of the game in the second <laughs> inning. Now I'm going nuts and I got to wait four days to come back and pitch. I, I like the, I love coming into situations. I love coming to the ballpark um, knowing that I could pitch that day and I, I love the situations that I come into. I think it's exciting. Those situations have prompted you to be one of the top pitchers in saves in the league. And you've gone from Chicago, you were in Pittsburgh and New York, and now you're over here with an organization that you really have given the credibility to, eight saves. How do you view your San Diego teammates? Well, we've got a really good bunch of, great bunch of guys, Steve. Uh, you know, clubhouses are always nice. You get some good and some bad and some in between. But uh, this has really been a great clubhouse. The young kids, uh, Martinez and McReynolds, uh, Gwynn, you don't know whether they knocked in four or struck out four times. You know, they, they've got that real even keel about themselves. Now they don't get too high when they when they have a great day. You wouldn't know the difference. And I think, uh, you know, the blend that we have with Garvey, Nettles, uh, you know, myself over there, uh, you know, I think it's it's going to be a good mixture, and only time will tell. Well, a lot of people said that you came over to San Diego from New York strictly to get out of the company of uh, <laughs> Greg Reynolds, and all of a sudden, here he is. You're together again. Well, you know, oh, uh, Nettles, he's a... Uh, 
he's great, you know, he's, I, like I said, I left New York to get away from him, you know. <laughs> I didn't want him following me anywhere, you know, and then all of a sudden he's here, but he's a great, he's a great, uh, he's probably the toughest mental, mentally toughest uh, player that I've ever played with. Uh, nothing gets him down, uh, you know, like I say, he, he could go for four or knock in four, you wouldn't know the difference, and I mean, you know, to play over there day in and day out, and, and the way, the aggressiveness, the way he goes about the job, uh, you know, I'm surprised that he's still playing the way he is, and you'd never know he's lost his stride at all. You got one of the fine young catchers in the league in Terry Kennedy. Tell me what it's like to throw to Terry. <laughs> well, they call us Shamu and Namu, you know, <laughs> so uh, I don't know which is which, but it doesn't really matter. Um, he's, a, he's, he's really a lot better receiver than I thought he'd be. Uh, uh, he's got a lot to learn, and you know the great thing about Terry is he's learning every day. And uh, you know, Steve, in this game, it's it's something to get here, but it's even something more to stay. You know, for around for a while, and that's the way Kennedy Kennedy takes his job. He's always willing to learn and always willing to listen to people that to instruct him. One quick question: You haven't lost anything to the ravages of time. How long can you continue to be a power pitcher? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Well, uh, the only time will tell. Okay, Goose, thanks a lot. And Vince is going to be back with Terry Kennedy after this message. San Diego Padres in town. I'm Vince Lloyd with you at Wrigley Field where the sun is shining brightly. And my guest, Terry Kennedy, whose eyes could be a little bloodshot today. Didn't get much sleep, did you? Well, our game finished at 12.05 in Atlanta yesterday. We had two rain delays, and it was a three-hour game anyway. Uh, we got in here at uh, 4 o'clock. I think most of us got to sleep by 5. Oh, that is a bad heck. You almost had as much sleep as you normally get, Terry. Oh no, I'm a. <laughs> I like to, I like to get a lot of sleep, but uh, it was a rough day yesterday, and worst of all, we got beat, and that made it wor that made the flight worse and the night shorter. Yeah, I know, I know what you mean, Terry. Uh, you're going to be playing today, despite the short night's sleep, and we're going to be looking at a pitcher that the Cubs have not faced before. Tell us a little bit about him. Well, Andy Hawkins has better than average uh, velocity, and he's got a little slider and uh, a sinker once in a while, but he's uh, mainly a power pitcher, and he comes right at to hitters and challenges. What about his control? It's good control. He, uh, he uh, doesn't walk many guys, and he, at times he can be a strikeout pitcher, but usually he's a ground ball pitcher. I know his record this year, 3-0 and last year, his first year in the league, first full year anyway, he was 5-10, and ten, right? I think it's five and seven, but his ERA was uh, ERA was either low threes or high twos somewhere in there. And he's just 24 years of age. Yeah, he's just a kid like the rest of us. Uh, <laughs> uh, another year or two, I'll be out of that category. But uh, yeah, he's uh, he's got a long, uh, good career ahead of him. Terry, there's no question about your bat. I know you're not happy with your average right now. I haven't looked it up, but I don't think you have. We're not going to worry about it. But you've got some power. You can play first base too when they want you to do that. But I know you prefer catching. But you've got a real fine arm. One problem, of course, for every catcher, a the kind of a game that you call, and I presume that you've gone over this lineup with Hawkins uh, before the game, and another one is a threat of base stealing. Show us your technique on it. Let's say you're getting set for a pitch, and we'll, we'll square away on you. Okay. You're getting set to receive a pitch, and you've got a guy on base who is a threat to steal. Will you set yourself any differently as far as your feet are concerned? Well, even though I got the first base in this here, I didn't know you were going to whip this out on me. But uh, uh, my main concern for me, because I'm, I'm the biggest catcher in the big leagues as far as height, and it's tough for me to get uncorked and, and always be in rhythm. So my main concern is making the turn so that my hands, after I catch the ball, making the shoulder turn so my hands are in a position to throw. I don't really worry about my legs that much. I just have to worry about not starting too soon because if I start too soon, I really get out of balance and, and I, can't, uh, I can't get the good balance and I either throw sidearm or I throw the ball in the dirt or too high. And that's not good. I know now your feet are set pretty much parallel to your pitcher, right? You do that all the time? I cheat a little bit. I'll turn, uh, I'll turn my body a little bit to the pitcher this way. So I so I can so it's easy for me to make that turn because like I said it's uh, I'm so big that I, that I have to cheat. You're how tall? Six three? Uh, six four. Six four. That's enough. That's enough. <laughs> All right. Terry Kennedy's catcher for the San Diego Padres, our guest. Steve Stone will be back with you right after this.